Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. Today I want to talk about the future of software engineering and how what we know today as a software engineer will soon be very different. There has been a lot of recent improvements on what the GBT model can do and they also announced a GBT app builder. So very soon we'll see a dramatic change in what we know as software engineering. One, Lately, we've been seeing a lot of tools that improves software engineering productivity. Tools such as Copilot, where while we are writing code, they help us autocomplete or tell us, hey, this is something that you should consider writing. These type of tools are being developed right now, and it's helping to increase coding proficiency and productivity levels. There are new tools that focus on the testing aspect, trying to see like, oh, here are some vulnerabilities and this is something that we can do like as a software engineer. And tools that help engineer debug and trying to apply fixes or generate documentations. But with this GBT technologies, like a lot of these might become more irrelevant. And now we are heading towards more of a second phase of where software engineering is heading towards. Like too many people are surprised Sure, like software engineering was considered something that oh, we can easily pivot into. There were many ways for people to pivot into software engineering, such as joining a bootcamp, study computer science on their own doing personal projects. So it seems like, oh yeah, the entrance of barrier isn't as high. But we all know like, you know, it is still pretty high to become a good enough developer. And that was something that was making this feel very lucrative. But with this recent development, that's way more powerful than the no-code alternative that we currently have today. It's going to make software engineering coding aspects way more accessible for a lot more people. I think based on the demo, like we can pretty confidently say like, yeah, the future is almost here. We are about to head in towards a prompt-driven development. This is how I would describe it where we won't be spending as much time writing code, where we will be spending a lot of times writing prompts, writing descriptions, writing project requirements, telling the tool to come up with something. And as a software engineer, your main focus on the job will just be trying to see like, oh, does the code write in a good style or does it make sense? But if you're someone who don't even want to worry about coding, then you can trust fully on these GPT technologies or whatever AI powered tool to help you build whatever app you desire. Simply use natural language and describe what the feature is about. You will be followed through a prompt that guides you how, how to build your app. And this is something that's really powerful and it's going to really ship the dynamic of software engineering. So this will definitely speed up the pace of innovation, creates new opportunities, but it might also make software engineering not us relevant. So if you are someone who's not in tech and you are building a new app, now you get to decide if you trust the GPT technology fully or you want to hire a software engineering figure or someone who knows software engineering and trying to hold the quality bar of the product. You might still have access to the code. You don't know coding, but you don't know how well it's written. There might be vulnerability or not. Do you trust the AI generated tool fully, completely, or you want to hire someone who might be a consulting figure? So I feel like software engineering will definitely become more of a consulting type of role or some sort of system design architectural, like senior level type of roles. So as a software engineer in the future, your job might look very different from what you currently do you might have more requirement on designing and being very specific about the type of system you want to know. So this actually requires you to know a lot about the domain, the type of tools available out there. Because you need to be able to judge like, oh, does this tool make sense? Does this make sense? Like, do I go with database type A or do I go with database type B? Like, or do I blindly just completely trust what the GPT think is the best at the moment. But we don't know if the GPT tool will be as powerful just yet. So you still have to be that type of decision makers and provide as much relevant information as possible because maybe lacking a bullet point A might lead to a complete different result and that result may not be what you want. So it's very tricky in that aspect. So I do think because of this, like new roles will be created that's focusing on design and focusing on developing and maintaining these type of AI tools. And to start off, you also need to have people who are building these products in the first place. So before you can fully replace coding, you have to have developers who can help you write these tools to make it happen. And I do think we are getting closer 
and closer. Like right now, the OpenAI App Builder tool isn't perfect, but it's definitely a game changer. And I know for a fact, a lot of big, more bigger companies will be eyeing this and trying to focus on it. Given that software engineer are one of the biggest expense for a lot of bigger tech companies. They might look into reducing this expense by leveraging some of these technologies and they're definitely putting in a lot of money into developing these type of tools. So right now we are still at the early stage but we are definitely pivoting from oh this is the buzz like we finally got Gen AI this is what it can do to okay this is looking a little scary this is getting to a point where we could actually rely on them to help us build startup, build tools without even having to know any coding backgrounds. It's not perfect. The code it writes may not be perfect, but the fact that it can go from zero to a hundred in matters of minutes, hours, like based on how you describe your task, it's tremendous. Like it's going to take software engineer month to maybe even build a product to have this speed of a turnaround, but now you can rely on GPT to go from zero to 100 really fast. Of course, scaling it right now is going to be tricky for sure for this GPT to, to handle, which is why you might still need expert. You might need the software engineer in that aspect. But besides that, yeah, it looks like it's going into a really solid position. So when I saw the news, I was first impressed and then I definitely also felt like, wow, it feels like it can do my job almost as well as I can. That's why I say, if you are a software engineer, your biggest asset shouldn't be the fact that you can write code. That should be a default. You should try to build something on top of that, that separates you. Is it the type of design? Is it the type of pattern you use? Is it the knowledge? Because you may never write as fast as the AI, so purely going for speed shouldn't be the focus. So for people who are thinking about starting that would be my recommendation. Like you should try to build a lot of depths and trying to really know the stuff that you do well. And this will prevent you from being replaced by AI, at least in the first phase, if we do get to that point in the near future. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.